Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as was introduced, I am from Pugyeong National University Institute for Humanities and Social Sciences. My name is Kim Kyung Ah. Today, I'm going to talk to you about uh, the, a Chinese female pirate, uh, Zhang Yi Sao. Before I uh, deliver my presentation in earnest, I would like to first of all talk about uh, pirates uh, who have ruled the seas uh, back in the 19th century in uh, the South China Sea. In order to do trading uh, in the 19th century, you had to follow the sea route uh, as is shown here in red arrows. So whether it's uh, Chusan, uh, Japan, or China, these are there are some of the sea routes uh, that uh, these traders had to pass by, and uh, it was the South China Sea. Especially if you think about China, in uh, 1761, Guangdong port uh, was uh, the port that uh, was the port uh, where trading was possible. So you have Hong Kong and Macau. And uh, if you move inwards, we have Gangzhou port. So uh, Westerners and merchants um, who wanted to trade with China had to come to this Guangzhou port. The picture here shows how uh, international uh, this Guangzhou was back in the 19th century. Uh, following the Zugang River, uh, we have uh, all these traders and merchants. And uh, we had uh, merchants and uh, traders uh, that were headed by foreigners. So in front of all these uh, offices, uh, we have Denmark, Portugal, US, uh, Sweden, uh, the UK, and uh, Netherlands, the Netherlands. Um, their flags are hung in front of their offices. So these merchants uh, would have their offices uh, here in uh, the port of Guangzhou. And this is a testament to how vibrant international trading was back in the 19th century. So um, very worthwhile assets uh, were being traded uh, in front of this Guangzhou port. So as a result, uh, many pirates were very active uh, in the close waters, and they used to have uh, different color-coded flags. We have red, uh, yellow, navy, black, and white, and uh, green flags used. And uh, they would sometimes uh, work in alliance, and they would uh, sign agreements. And uh, they would also have their um, pirates uh, follow their rules. And they also made sure that uh, their turf would not overlap. And uh, as you can see from here, this is how they would uh, delineate uh, their turf. And what's interesting is that uh, they would have uh, their rule of command. They would sometimes um, work independently, but uh, in the case of emergency and war, uh, this uh, red uh, pirate would serve as the um, command center. And if they are confronted uh, with a strong enemy, then they would have this uh, one integrated uh, command system to, uh, to uh, combat that enemy. Now, today I'm going to share with you in earnest um, a female pirate uh, called Zhang Yi Sao. And uh, Zhang Yi Sao actually was associated uh, with uh, the red uh, pirates. And this is the brief history of her. Her real name was Shi Shang Guo, and some people say that uh, she uh, was a court courtesan. Uh, she would marry the head of this uh, red pirate. Her name is Zhang Yi Sao, and Sao means a wife. So Zhang Yi Sao actually means the wife of Zhang Yi, the head of uh, this red uh, pirates. But uh, this pronoun actually uh, became the name that uh, was used to call her. And uh, with her husband, she was able to rule the, this clan. And uh, she was able to grow this clan into one of the most powerful amongst the six uh, different pirate clans. And also 1810, uh, Yang Guang's uh, governor um, actually would uh, take her in. So uh, she would surrender to this governor. And uh, she would later on uh, marry her stepson, Zhang Bao, uh, give birth to one son, one daughter. 
And after Zhang Bao dies, uh, she will return to Gangzhou. She would uh, run a gambling home. And then the, at the age of 69, she would die. Now, uh, if you look at uh, the Western and Asian history, um, in terms of wealth and in terms of power, I think that uh, you wouldn't be able to find any pirate uh, like uh, Zhang Yisau. The Red Clan would uh, raid uh, different merchants and uh, build their wealth and also asset. And sometimes uh, if they would charge ransom uh, to for prisoners, and uh, if uh, they were not able to pay ransom, they would sell them as slaves, and they would also charge fees for safe passage to different merchants and traders. And uh, based on the records that we have, Zhang Yisa was the head of the Red Clan, and uh, she was a, she uh, definitely had the qualities of a head of a clan. First of all. Let's look at her leadership. Uh, she had an excellent leadership, and also she uh, was also very. She was also very um, business oriented. Uh, most of her um, pirates uh, were not literate, uh, so it was really difficult to have uh, the pirates or the clan uh, in order. But uh, Zhang Yisao was able to. Uh, introduce uh, three uh, important rules, and uh, if uh, they fail to follow or comply with the rules, then uh, regardless of uh, the ranking, um, they would uh, their ears would be pierced, and they would be embarrassed in front of the clan members, and then would be killed. Now, here you see the three rules. What's interesting is the second one. So, um, the rooted uh, wealth would be counted in front of all the clan members and they would book into their accounts. So although they were pirates, uh, you can see that their finances were kept uh, very transparently. And also 80% of the wealth that they were able to acquire were actually saved up uh, for public purposes. And that actually probably helped uh, the clan uh, to have royalty to the head. And also, 20% uh, would be set aside for those uh, who actually made contribution to, uh, to building that asset. So it's like a commission or an incentive in today's terms. So pirates would, uh, I think, uh, would be motivated uh, by this type of rule that uh, Zheng Yisao had. Now, this red clan made sure that these rules are complied with, and sometimes and these uh, rules uh, were able to keep the clan together, and this uh, served as a motivating factor in times of difficulties. Now let's take a look at uh, their achievements. Here you see a picture. On the left-hand side, uh, you see a person uh, looking like a fisherman, and uh, he has a white towel with him, and uh, it's like a it's, and this is actually Red Clan's uh, pirate um, disguising as a lost fisherman in order to target and raid uh, Western uh, merchants. And uh, in the middle, this is a um, picture that uh, was included uh, in a autobiography of a Westerner who was actually taken in uh, by the, uh, the Red Clans, but later released. On the right-hand side, uh, you see another picture, and uh, here you see how um, a prisoner was beheaded, and uh, their heads are tied together. Hairs are tied together, and on the right-hand side, uh, they have uh, a sword or a knife, uh, trying to do. Uh, for the ratings, and uh, the reason why they have uh, those beheaded heads uh, with them is because they would get incentives accordingly. So these uh, pictures uh, show how brutal these pirates were. Zhang Yisao was also very uh, good uh, when it comes to commanding in times of difficulties. 
So in the Chang Dynasty, uh, the Red Clan uh, got so powerful, so the navy would be dispatched uh, to combat them, and Zhang Yisa would uh, actually join the battle herself. And this is a Chang Yi Chang Do depicting that war. And uh, this is uh, currently stored at a museum in Hong Kong. And if you enlarge it, you can see that uh, you have uh, the Navy trying to bomb uh, pirates. And uh, we also have uh, racked uh, pirate ships and uh, pirates in the water surrendering and it uh, shows as if uh, the Navy was very powerful and successful in their combat. However, that was not uh, what it uh, was like in reality. The governor uh, actually died uh, and Shi Ting Kui, who was the successor, was also also became a prisoner to this uh, Red Clan, and he killed himself afterwards. And afterwards, uh, Shin Chen Bu, who also was the head of the Navy, actually bombarded uh, this uh, Zhang Yisao led uh, pirates. Uh, however, he failed. Zhang Yisao also uh, was very good uh, with handling people's minds. Back in 1850s, um, this is something that the UK Navy was able to get um, after fight after a fight uh, with pirates, and it says uh, Chinese Hang Mo at the top. Chinese uh, pirates had a strong faith uh, in the water goddess, and when it comes to uh, defeating and also advancing in the waters. Uh, they would say that uh, they would only follow the rules of uh, the water goddess. And Zhang Yisao would uh, use uh, those faith uh, of the pirates. Amongst the pirates, there was a strong belief uh, that uh, the sea goddesses uh, were watching out, watching out for the Red Clan. And probably this is a rumor spread by the Red Clans. But anyways, um, the strong belief uh, that Red Clans are being protected uh, by the goddesses of war, uh, goddesses of water, actually helped uh, to put uh, and keep uh, the pirates together and also to uh, instill deep fear amongst uh, their rivals. And uh, the pirates were encouraged to drink a special drink uh, before uh, going to a war. And uh, if after drinking that uh, drink, uh, they would uh, red, uh, they would get their eyes, they would get red shot eyes, and uh, they would faces would uh, turn uh, black. So um, with that appearance, they were able to also uh, give strong fear to their rivals and enemies. And also, uh, if you look at a record in the UK, uh, it, it says that Zhang Yisao, before uh, going to a war, it says garlic water, and uh, Zhang Yisao actually um, sprinkled uh, garlic water to her clan members. And uh, there was a belief uh, that uh, this garlic water uh, was considered an effectual charm against shot. And, uh, the clan members are uh, blessed with this, this garlic water would uh, steer towards um, their enemies uh, without any fear. So uh, obviously, uh, Zhang Yisao was able to utilize all those uh, psychological warfare to her favor. And uh, later on, uh, Zhang Yisao uh, decides uh, to surrender to the government, and uh, she would uh, negotiate uh, with uh, the governor of Yangguang. Um, the discussion actually fails um, in the first attempt. Uh, they were not able to trust each other, and so uh, the discussion failed. Uh, and Zhang Yisao actually makes a proposal. She visits uh, Bang, Bang Yi, and uh, she, instead of taking with her a talented uh, pirate, uh, sh she would uh, take um, people, females, and also their children with them, and they were able to finally settle, and Biding and Zhang Yisao was able to sit down at the negotiation table. And uh, the negotiation process, uh, Zhang Yisao was able to have an upper hand. Uh, Bai Ling 
uh, wanted to confiscate all the assets of the Red Clan. However, uh, Zhang Yisao uh, kept her vessels for salt trade and lamb, also the weapons, and all those uh, were actually negotiated before surrendering them and also uh, what they are going to do with the pirates or the members of the Red Clan uh, were all sorted out in advance uh, before surrendering to Bai Ling. Officially, however, Yang Guang's uh, governor, Bai Ling, um, is described to have uh, successfully persuaded uh, Zhang Yisao. Here you can see Zhang Bao, uh, one of her members of her clan, and you can see that uh, Zhang Bao has knelt down in front of Bai Ling, and uh, uh, before him is the is Bai Ling, the governor of Yang Guang. And here, uh, this is Chong He drawing, and here we have 20 different episodes of uh, how this governor is uh, defeating the Red Clan. And we also have Hu Guo Dai, uh, the uh, Black Clan's head. But uh, in these uh, different scenarios, we can't really find uh, Zhang Yisao. So although she was a very powerful leader of a very powerful uh, pirate clan, uh, because of this uh, Confucianism, uh, she is not actually depicted in this drawing. In the Western world, uh, she is also well known as a successful uh, female pirate, uh, Madame Qing, or pirate the widow uh, Qing, the mistress Qing. All these are some of the nicknames, nicknames uh, used to refer to uh, Zhang Yisao in the Western world. Of course, uh, it looks negative, though. As you can see from these pictures, on the left-hand side, uh, you see a fencing-like uh, sword. And uh, uh, we have uh, Zhang Yisao on the right-hand side. Uh, the source is unknown. And in the middle, this is uh, The World of Villain, uh, a Spanish uh, novelist's book. And uh, Zhang Yisao is the heroine in this story. And on the right hand side, you can see in yellow dress uh, Zhang Yisao. She has a big earring and she has her sword with her. And uh, in the bottom, you see an Italian movie. And on the right hand side, uh, we have uh, Zhang Yisao. And uh, Zhang Yisao is one of the main female characters here. And here we also have Qing Shi, and this is a uh, character in a game. Just like a ninja, she has her sword on her back. And also the Pirates of Caribbean uh, uh, Season 3 has Mistress Qing, and this is actually Qing Yisa. The motif was taken from uh, this female pirate, Zhang Yisa. So if you look at all these pictures, the Western culture would uh, pay attention to Zhang Yisao. However, when it comes to the descriptions, uh, she has a uh, fencing sword, uh, she has a pirate uh, hat, or she is depicted as a ninja, and uh, she has a kabuki uh, makeup. So from a Western point of view, every Oriental aspects are used uh, in order to depict uh, Zhang Yisao. So this shows that um, uh, it's very important for China to take the leadership in the studying this uh, Chinese female pirate, Zhang Yisao. Uh, in China, unfortunately, Zhang Yisao is not that well known. And therefore, uh, through this presentation today, I hope that uh, this Chinese female pirate, uh, Zhang Yisao, and also Chinese pirate uh, stories uh, can be studied and uh, developed uh, into an interesting content. Thank you.